Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Nowadays, because of the busy lifestyles, a lot of us don't have time to go grocery shopping every day. So what we do is to buy a lot of food each time when we go shopping and store them at home and eat over a period of time. But often, some food spoil before they get eaten. Have you ever thrown away unused food at home? I have, and I'm sure the answer is also yes for a lot of you. But this doesn't just happen at our homes. Food waste is generated at every stage of the supply chain. Globally, one third of the food produced for human, for human consumption goes to waste. And in Australia alone, we waste 7.6 million tons of food each year. And this costs our economy more than $36.6 billion. Apart from the economic losses, uh, food waste also has significant environmental impacts because the resources used to produce the food, such as land and water, also get wasted. And not to mention a lot of food, uh, a lot of the food waste goes to landfill. One way to reduce food waste is to increase food shelf life, so we can get more time to finish the food before they spoil. For different food products, there are many different ways to extend shelf life. And um, so during my PhD, I work on the shelf life extension of fresh meat products. A major factor limiting the shelf life of fresh meat products is the action of spoilage bacteria. So controlling the, um, controlling the growth of spoilage bacteria would be an effective way to uh, make fresh meat last longer. And because today the consumers demand for more natural food products, for my PhD, my research look at a new natural method for fresh meat shelf life extension, that's by using protective cultures. Protective cultures are microorganisms with the ability to control unwanted microorganisms in food. They are natural and safe to consume. Uh, the concept is similar to adding starter cultures to milk to make yogurt. But instead of using, uh, the, protective uh, instead of using the starter cultures to uh, make fermented food products, we use protective cultures for their antimicrobial functions. So for my PhD, I was wondering if protective cultures could be applied to fresh meat products to inhibit spoilage bacteria and make the meat products last longer. Because using protective cultures to extend meat shelf life is a non-conventional method, my research evaluated the practicality of this approach from both the technical application and the market acceptability perspectives. And next, I will show you the main findings from my research. For the technical application of protective cultures, first, I tested six different protective cultures on lamb back straps stored in two types of uh, common retail packaging. And um, this was done by, uh, so I did this to uh, first confirm if the protective cultures could actually work against the spoilage bacteria. And I did this by comparing the growth of spoilage bacteria at the end of storage um, and to see the difference between the lamb back straps treated with protective cultures and the normal meat untreated with the protective cultures. And um, the six protective cultures I tested contain uh, different combinations of the four different bacterial species um, shown in the table. And the two packaging systems I tested were modified atmosphere packaging with 80% oxygen and 20% carbon dioxide and vacuum packaging. Results showed that protective cultures were overall more effective in vacuum packaging and they caused up to four log reduction of spoilage bacteria compared to untreated lamb back straps. And in modified atmosphere packaging, they only caused up to 1.8 log reduction of the spoilage bacteria. So from the results of the initial testing, I selected culture one and culture four as the two of the most effective, effective protective cultures in vacuum packaging. And then I studied them in more detail to understand their effect on spoilage bacteria during storage, their potential to be used in a variety of meat products and their impact on meat quality. 
I apply the two protective cultures to, different, to two different types of fresh meat products. One was lamb back straps, again, to represent intact meat cuts like a steak. And the other one was beef mince, including lean mince and standard mince with higher fat content. And the findings were very interesting. Enterobacterius E is a group of common meat, meat spoilage bacteria, so I'll use this one as an example to show you the effects of the protective cultures on spoilage bacteria. On lamb back straps, the levels of Enterobacterius E on untreated samples increased rapidly in the second half of storage. And on back, stra on back straps treated with the protective cultures, the increases were much less. In beef means the growth trend of Enterobacteria CE in lean means was very similar to that of lamb back straps. As you can see, the protective cultures suppress the growth of these bacteria. But in the standard means with higher fat content, the protective cultures did not have any effect on the spoilage bacteria. This means that the same protective cultures could be used in both lamb and beef and in intact meat cuts and minced products to effectively control the growth of spoilage bacteria. But their application may be limited to lean or low-fat meat products. In terms of meat quality, the two protective cultures in general had minimal impact on meat color and texture, but they slightly decreased meat pH, and it would require further research to determine the practical significance of the pH decreases. After testing the protective cultures in meat products, we see, the, we see this approach has great potential for fresh meat shelf life extension. But if consumers don't accept this approach, it's not going to be very meaningful. So I conducted a national online survey asking 803 Australian consumers whether they would be willing to buy and eat fresh meat products with added protective cultures, uh, if these products could last longer and for the same price. So the results show that overall, 15% of the respondents said they would be more likely to buy, and about half of the respondents said it would make no difference. And if we add these two categories together, it means at least 63% of consumers would be willing to buy meat with added protective cultures. And only 18% of respondents said they would be less likely to buy. For consumers' willingness to eat meat with added protective cultures after being cooked, results show that overall, 46% of respondents said they would definitely or probably eat, and only 11% said they would not eat. So with only small proportions of respondents not willing to buy or eat meat with added protective cultures, consumer acceptance of these meat products would unlikely be an issue. These are the major findings from my research. To summarize, protective cultures can effectively inhibit spoilage bacteria in fresh meat products with low impact on meat quality, and they are likely to be accepted by consumers. Therefore, protective cultures have great potential to be used as a natural solution for fresh meat shelf life extension to help us reduce food waste, save money, and save the environment. Thank you.